So here in our modern poultry, you can see some of the closest relatives still alive today from the ancient dinosaurs. Notice many of the features they have in common. They flock together as do many grazing animals. The long legs, you also see these in ostriches, and other modern. Remind you of the oviraptor, perhaps? The egg eater, as it was called. And the long neck, especially in the turkeys, is more visible due to their lack of feathering. Although, dinosaurs may have had more feathers than was commonly drawn. You know, why, why am I talking about what feathers we may or may not see in drawings of dinosaurs? Let's, let's go see some of our uh, modern versions. Is she out there in the field? <laughs> There's a dinosaur in our garden. Of course she's in there. Hey, come here, girl. Come here. Usually I bring treats. Uh, this is kind of a mistake. Oh, geez. Uh, does anybody have treats? No. Okay. Ah. Oh, okay. No. 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 no <laughs> okay. Whoa. 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 Oh, that was a mistake. All right. Well, in our comparison with our turkeys, you can see that she's got some scaly skin. Uh, unlike our turkeys, she's got these horns, which are actually bred. You know, you see those, of course, in cattle often, but they tend to be bred out as often as people can manage to do so. Uh, Hey, hey, hey. As with all livestock, being friendly is extremely important for me to handle her. Hey, you know, if anybody actually knows where I can find uh, a mate for her, or really just a friend, it doesn't even matter, male, female, uh, neutered, you know, she's really just so alone out here. I suppose I could get some sheep, I was just kind of worried about her trampling them. So, see, she's branded here from her previous owners. I got her at an auction. You gotta be careful with those, but you can find some real, you can get some real finds sometimes. <laughs> so she's out here actually, uh, fortunately for me, the weeds in my garden tend to be her favorite thing to eat. So that's why we kind of let her roam out here, even if she occasionally takes an ear of corn. Okay, everyone, welcome back to EC2002. Uh, this is going to be lecture 34, and today we're going to be covering uh, chapter 36. So we're almost at the end here, um, and we're dealing with the active high pass filtering and duality, which is uh, um, directly coming from our experience with active low pass filtering, where we started using op amps, okay? And remember that when we talk about active filtering, what we're really referring to is the utilization of an op amp in our configuration. And we like to try to get rid of as many inductors as possible in this process. Um, and for most of the stuff that we've done so far, that's been completely plausible. Um, but today, in going to high pass filtering, we run into a little bit of an issue. So let's think about this for a moment. Basically, in the past, we had, um, for passive filtering, we just swapped the inductors and the capacitors. And we saw that when we went from a, a low pass filter to a normalized high pass filter, that we simply took the inductors and capacitors and switched which ones were which. And then the new capacitors were defined in terms of this new variable, um, capital omega C over omega P, which is our scaling factor uh, times L, which is the value of the old inductor that was there. And likewise for the inductor um, the new inductor that gets replaced uh, for the capacitor there um, it has a similar equation. And so we can do um, you know, some frequency scaling on this and, and do other things to it. But the bottom line here is that the governing equation for this is a sort of inversion on S, right? We're sort of flipping S on top of its own head. And that works very well, um, but we still have this lymphac of... Um, what are we going to do with these inductors? Because we really don't want any inductors in our new circuit. And if all we had before was resistors uh, and capacitors, then we're going to end up with resistors and inductors. So what are we going to do for this? 
Okay. Well, let's think about our uh, first order um, normalized low pass Butterworth filter. Um, for this, what we had was this equation for our transfer function. I should probably write that out here. Uh, H of S was equal to this. And I could, I should specify here, low pass filter, normalized low pass filter. Um, and so this came from, uh, we were, or rather I should say, by defining CF, RN, and RF, we could get this normalized version. Um, simply put, we let RN equal 1, we let RF equal 1, and recall that we let CF also equal just 1. And there's a negative sign here, but we're going to ignore it for now. Uh, you can have the inversion in there, and we've talked about how to take care of that. But the, the main point here is, okay, we only have capacitors and resistors. We want to avoid, uh, in, avoid inductors. What the heck can we do? So I would have to put an inductor in here, right? If I want to leave my resistors alone. Well, as it turns out, there's actually another way to approach this entire problem. So we can take a normalized version of this and flip it on its head, right? So if we, if we flip it on its head, let's say omega p is equal to 1. So we're using the normalized version here then what we end up with is basically I know the transfer function of, let me write it a little bit more explicitly. So the transfer function of the high pass filter is equal to the transfer function of the low pass filter, right? And if I go back to my equation here with this omega p right there, right, that where it starts to pass, omega p over s. So in theory, what I should be able to do for the Butterworth here for a first order normalized Butterworth filter is just flip that S on its head. And if I let omega P equals one, this is going to be rather simple. This should just be one over one over S plus one. Well, that's okay. But what does that do if we think about it in the context of this equation? So where did this come from in terms of our um, active filter circuit? So if I consider for a moment one over RP over uh, 1 over, what do we have here? Uh, S times CF. Okay, so well, uh, this is now actually CF over S, right? Because it's 1 over S. Uh, plus 1, well, this is just 1 over RN. And this is not, uh, sorry, I don't know why I wrote RP. It's RN and RF. Getting these mixed up here. RF and RN. There we go. Okay, so now what can I do with this? Well, as it turns out, we don't really like this form, right? This is kind of a yucky form. Um, so what I can do here is actually rewrite this in terms of our standardized format for poles and zeros, right? We want our poles and zeros to be of the form S plus A, you know, over S plus, oops, that's not an S, S plus, you call that A1, A2, okay, something like this, right? If we could write this guy in this form would be in really good shape. Well, we can, we just multiply top and bottom by S. And likewise, I'll do it here first, one plus S. Okay, and I can just swap those around. So this is S plus one, S over S plus one. All right, so that's the um, transfer function for the normalized high pass filter, Butterworth, okay? Now, looking at this from the perspective of the elements that we have in play, um, Let's see what happens when I go ahead and apply the same algebraic manipulation to this expression here. Okay, so this would be equal to S over Rn over Cf plus S over Rf. Okay, well, this is interesting. Um, now, if one thing to notice here is that basically what I've done is I've swapped in this expression where S and where 1 is. Okay, so if we look back here, um, if you just swapped all the 1s for S's and all the S's for 1s, uh, you would get this guy right here, right? So effectively what's going on here is those impedances that we calculated are being replaced uh, or flipped over between the resistors and the, and the capacitors, right? So I could actually re-express this and this as capacitors. And I can re-express this as just a simple fixed resistance or a fixed resistor, right? So 
all I'm going to do here is rewrite the values of the input impedance as a capacitor um, inducing that, that impedance, okay? So the input impedance to the system, let me, let me grab a circuit here. Let me, let's grab this other circuit from here. Make this just a little bit more interesting for ourselves. Copy, paste. Okay, so let's, let's convert this into uh, the frequency domain a little bit here before we do these switches. So before what we had, right, was uh, this was some constant Rn, this was some constant Rf, and this was some constant Cf, right? You can see that here, pretty straightforward. Okay, well, so now what's going on is the position of those hasn't really changed, but their values have changed. And so, um, as a matter of fact, this wasn't just CF, right? This was actually S times CF. And if I write this a little bit nicer, you'll be able to see uh, the casing better. There we are. That's better. Okay, so this was S times CF. So this had to have come from the capacitor, right? This was based on the form of the capacitor, which is S times some constant, the capacitance. And these are fixed. This was fixed. Well, now what's happened is this has become a variable, right? This is effectively S times 1 over Rn. So actually, if I replace this now, and I'm going to go ahead and do this over, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and re redraw this a little bit here. So let me paste that old one here. I'll do a little bit of Jerky, jerky stuff here. RF, SCF. Okay, so now what I have is I need this to become whatever this impedance was, it now becomes S times 1 over RF. Well, if this was a capacitor here, then this would just be S times, we'll call it C prime F, okay? And, and effectively what this is, this is just a capacitor with the value one over F for its capacitance. Okay, so we saw that, the, whoops. So we saw that this basically becomes this guy here, right? So this is S times one over Rn. So this is S times one over Rn. And you can see here that this is kind of turning things on its head, but, but not exactly. Um, Again, we form another uh, capacitor here. This is S times uh, C in prime. Well, before we didn't really have a C in, but you get the idea. The prime here just is designating what's happening in the uh, high pass filter version of this circuit. Okay, so this has to become now a capacitor. Okay, and this one also now is a capacitor. Well, what happened to this? Oops, what happened to this guy here? Well, we dropped off the S, right? Oh, okay. So the S fell off, and what did we? What were we left with? Well, we were left with CF. But we know for that all of our resistor values, it's one over the resistance. That is to say, we're looking at the emittance values. So effectively, this became. This becomes CF, which means that this is a resistor. Of, one over one over CF. Right. Another way to look at it is the impedance here. Um, this becomes a resistor of value 1 over CF, effectively, because it's just a constant. And we take the reciprocal value of, uh, of that output, okay, for the resistor value. So that's, that's it. That's effectively everything that we, we need in order to create the new high pass version, okay? So the high pass version looks something like this. It's now a capacitor. And I'm gonna write the capacitor up top here now. Um, let's do it, let's be a little bit consistent. And there's that. This was our feedback, right? 
this goes to ground, minus, plus, connects up, we're good. Okay, and then the capacitor value here is 1 over RF, 1 over RN, and 1 over uh, CF. Okay? Now, in the normalized case, because all of these values were equal to 1, effectively what we have here is just 1, 1, and 1. Okay? But if we wanted to do any kind of frequency or magnitude scaling, you could then apply it from there, and it would make your life much easier because you were already in that normalized uh, version of the circuit. Okay? Now, let's see what happens when we have a uh, non-normalized uh, filter that we have to deal with. So, I think the book, the book actually goes through this a little bit. Um, the, the whole chapter for this, by the way, is only like three pages, okay? So, um, apologize that there's not much more in here, but let's do an example, actually, because I think this shows better. Um, and probably should add this example to the book, quite frankly, but I think it'll show better what's going on here. So, let's suppose, for example, okay, that we have a transfer function like so. 2s plus 3 over 4s plus 5, okay? And basically, we want to take this transfer function. So we want to go from being a low-pass filter here to being a high-pass filter here, okay? And the best way to do that is let's draw out the circuit first, and then we'll see what we get, all right? So um, noting here how these are constructed, this is actually not too bad. We're looking at a... Um, from the perspective of these sort of admittance values, right? Um, and actually, I want to make a quick correction here. So the if we're looking at it from the perspective of impedance here, technically this should be 1 over SCF uh, here, okay? So when we drop off the value of 1 over S here, uh, this just becomes 1 over CF, and that's uh, why our resistance becomes that. So... Um, yeah, little little correction there. But anyways, you get the idea. Apologies. Okay, so looking at the admittances here, this is actually pretty easy to construct. Okay, we have a incoming on top. We've got a capacitor of 2 farads and a resistor of 1 over 3, right? So uh, 1 over 3 ohms. Pretty crazy values, honestly. Um, but again, you can do some scaling and uh, that'll take care of that right away. This is just our simple version of this. This is a solution to this. Four farads. And uh, there we go. There's our op amp. There's that. Okay, so this is our low pass filter. Okay, and we want to transform this into a high pass filter well what we do is we just say well um omega c was some value we want to take that and make it become one over omega c okay so as before we want to flip it to be a high pass filter and then scale up as needed okay so let's see what happens when we flip this over itself well uh, our new just becomes equal to one over c old Okay, and it's uh, our capacitor goes to a resistor. Okay, and C new is equal to one over R old, and it becomes a capacitor from a resistor. Okay, so switching things up here, what we get is the following. So we have a resistor on top now, capacitor on bottom. Not that it matters. I mean, this is perfectly symmetric, right? From the perspective of the circuit, it doesn't care. But for our purposes, if we're being consistent with ourselves, which we should be, then, uh, oops, I don't want to switch those, minus plus, then... Uh, we want to keep them in the right place so that we know, you know, what the heck we're still looking at here. Okay, so this actually just becomes, take the reciprocal, right, 
ohms. Take the reciprocal here, three farads. Uh, take the reciprocal here, one quarter ohm. And take the reciprocal here. So this is five farads. Okay, pretty big capacitors. Um, and that's it. That's all we do for this. And then, again, we can just do now just apply uh, uh, KM, KF as needed. Okay. Not too bad at all. Now, in the book, they kind of walk through the algebraic process for this. Um, so let's go ahead and do that for just a moment here so that you guys have it in your, have it in your notes, uh, make this a little bit easier. So general non honest HPF. Okay. Just continuing this in a more general fashion. HPF. Oops. I inverting the omega axis. So let's see what's actually going on here by doing this this flipperoo here. And we're gonna do um, our example that we had from earlier, where we had the uh, high pass filter, normalized high pass filter, I guess you could say, um, was equal to one over R in over SCF plus 1 over RF. Okay, and in this case, so going back to example at beginning, okay, in this case what we had was um, a pole at where? Well, if I look down here, how do I get a pole? Well, I look at the roots of this expression. Um, pretty easy to find, actually. Uh, the root here is just minus 1 over CF RF, right? For our pole. Okay, so one pole right there. That's great. Now, if we perform a similar operation on the transfer function, then what we need actually is to flip this over. So this is a particular value of s, right? Well, s becomes essentially 1 over s, right, for all this. And in fact, you could write this even better as omega p over s, right, if it's not a normalized filter. So we just flip this over on its head, and what we end up with is we should have a pole, oops, pole at, well, minus, take the reciprocal here, CF, RF, for the high pass filter. Okay? But, this is when omega is equal to 1. So when omega p is not equal to 1, we use omega. In particular, we use omega c equal to omega p over omega c, right? In the passive filtering case, LPF to HPF conversion, when the high pass filter, 3 dB frequency, which we call little omega c, was not the same as omega p, results in the scaling of our constructed frequency by variable omega, um, by omega, capital omega here, uh, is equal to omega p over omega c. So what does this mean? Well, recall that effectively, right, when omega p was not equal to omega c, this was the condition that we put on ourselves to be able to make that conversion possible. Okay, and what this is reading here is this is that special spot that we want to flip over, okay? And that's why at 3 dB we could just take um, this as a given because it made our lives a lot easier. So we're going to go to that spot 
and do that, uh, that flip there. Okay, so what does this mean in terms of our transfer function? Well, our transfer function, then, we just do this replacement, okay? We just do this replacement. So what we end up with is 1 over, let me write this in a, in a new color here. Let's do blue. So H high pass filter of S, continuing from here, right, is just going to be equal to whatever this guy was, evaluated at omega P over o, big omega C times S. Okay, so that stays the same because there's no functions of S in there. But down here we have something change. Omega C times S. It's getting a little crowded there, but that's okay. Times CF plus 1 over RF. Okay, and now if we multiply top and bottom by S, we quickly see what's going on here. Again, we end up with this. And then omega P over omega, big omega, oops, C times CF plus S times 1 over RF. Okay. And note here that the ratio little omega P over capital omega C is equal to omega P times omega C over omega P, which equals omega C. So effectively, using this expression, we can rewrite omega P over omega C is equal to omega C, yeah? So this just becomes S over Rn times omega C, Cf, plus S times 1 over Rf, okay? Therefore, um, in the more general case, we are not simply inverting our omega axis about omega equal 1. Our active low-pass filter elements have been converted to hi active high-pass filter elements as follows which are the uh, to do this here, right? We're replacing our uh, capacitors with resistors and our resistors with capacitors. Uh, and, and in this case, though, um, it's not just R new equal to 1 over C old, right? We have to account for um, a particular phenomenon here, right? Notice here that this omega C is playing a role now in that re new resistor value. So we need to modify our equations slightly. And so generalized, all right, we have C new is equal to one over R old. That's fine. So if I get a new capacitor in there, just take one over the old resistance value. Got it. For the new resistance values, however, we need to be a little bit more careful. These are actually... Uh, equal to a particular um, value times these. And so that little omega C must go along for the ride if we want to maintain our accuracy. So this is for non-normalized cases. And no surprise here, if, uh, if omega C uh, was equal to one, then this becomes the normalized case. Okay, so pretty straightforward there. All right, so let's do another practical application of this. Um, the thing that you guys really needed to know for this is the process. I, I'm not expecting you guys to necessarily memorize the derivation of why we can swap these out, but just know how to use them and how they work. Okay, for a quiz or something like that. Okay, so what we have here for the third order Butterworth filter is we have kind of a two-stage approach. We've talked about this at length. So this comes down here to uh, a amplifier. Right? And this is our first stage. And this first stage represents the 1 over S plus 1 that we needed. 
And then this is connected to a second stage. And you may recognize this as a very special kind of filter. And our negative terminal here is actually uh, coming around. We'll just do it like that. Okay. And in this configuration we had for the second part, the Salon and Key, right? Also known as Saraga. And the transfer function for this portion was just this 1 over s squared plus s plus 1. And the overall transfer function for this, for the low pass filter, by the way, was h normalized low pass filter of s is equal to 1 over s uh, to the third. Whoa, there we go. Okay, pen. plus 2s plus 1. Okay? All right, so what happens here when I want to convert this to a high-pass filter? So I want a third-order high-pass Butterworth filter that's active. All right, well, that's actually pretty straightforward. I'm just going to copy this thing. Copy. And I shrink it down here a little bit so I give myself some space. And I'm going to take out my capacitors and resistors and just swap them out. Okay, this becomes a capacitor. Resistor up there. So capacitor, capacitor, resistor. And one more down here, I forgot another resistor right there okay all right so what about the values for these well coming back to this diagram for a moment what values did I have well as you recall from last lecture we actually solved for a lot of this stuff already so I'm just gonna plug in the normalized versions here and having these normalized versions handy is going to allow us to easily make this conversion. So we don't even have to worry about the uh, generalized version or form here that we just derived. Uh, we can just straight up jump right into generating the high pass filter equivalent. Okay. Okay. So one, 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 one. The only thing that's not one is here and here. And so these will become um, one half ohm and two ohms respectively. Okay, that's pretty easy. One half ohm and two ohms here, and then everything else is just one farad or one ohm. I got everything there. Easy, right? All right, well, let's suppose... Suppose I wanted... Uh, KF factor of 1,000, okay? I.e., we want a high-pass filter with omega P equal to 1 kilo uh, radians per second. Okay? So, all we do is we apply the old formula... But now, actually, what we could do instead, from coming from the low-pass filter, is we have an omega p value that's not equal to 1, right? It's equal to 1,000. And so when we do our conversions here, we just use those new equations we have, and it makes this really easy. Okay? And so this 1,000 factor applies to all of our capacitors only. And so when I apply this uh, frequency scaling, what I end up doing is I just say, well, um, if I want this, then what I go 
go do here is I just go through all these capacitors and I just scale them by a factor of a thousand. Okay. And so this just becomes one uh, millifarads, one millifarad, one millifarad, and one millifarad. Okay. Pretty straightforward. So now you have an active third order high pass Butterworth filter. Okay, there's a lot of lot of <laughs> a lot of words, a lot of alphabet soup in there. And uh, I've specified a uh, frequency scaling factor. So you've usefully put it somewhere that you want it to be. And you've generated reasonable values, more reasonable values in the process. And if you want to do some kind of magnitude scaling now too, you could do that as well. Okay. All right, so there we are. Um, that's pretty much it for the third order. Um, we can talk, let's talk briefly about the second order salinity key, um, just so that you have it in your notes. So recall that the second order is going to look like this, right? It's just effectively that second stage. Um, but the transfer function is slightly different. Why is it slightly different from the third order? Well, it's actually. <laughs> okay, let's take this bend out of this wire. Or, there we go. Getting distracted here. I can't talk and draw at the same time anymore. This has become a problem. Okay, so let me erase that. And there. Input, output. All right. So recall that our transfer function here is got a square root of 2 in there. And that the second stage here had a transfer function of s squared plus s plus 1, right? So effectively, uh, we should expect something similar to this, but not quite the same. As it turns out, um, we derived this kind of already, and uh, it's, it's actually pretty straightforward. This should be still 1 ohm, 1 ohm here. We just take our resistance values to be 1. And then, as a matter of fact, this should be square root of 2 farads, and this is 1 over the square root of 2 farads. And this is just being accounted for by that extra factor that's in there. Um, and so if you rederive our overall uh, equation for the circuit, the transfer function for this circuit was 1 over R1, R2, C1, C2, and this is a good review, over S squared plus 1 over C1, 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, S plus 1 over R1, R2, C1, C2 again. And so we wanted this to be equal to the square root of 2, right? And so in doing so, we just said, well, uh, let's let R1 equal R2 equal 1. And then, of course, uh, C1 here would have to be equal to uh, 1 over, I'm sorry, not 1 over, uh, the square root of 2, because it would be 1 over R1 plus 1 over R1, which gives you 2, so now we have 2 over the square root of 2, which is square root of 2, so that coefficient is effectively there, and then this causes C2 to be 1 over the square root of 2 uh, to balance out this expression here, okay? So it becomes pretty straightforward. Now, what? how do we make this a high-pass filter? Well, it's very straightforward. All we do is we just flip stuff over. Um, so if we wanted this to be a, uh, a high-pass filter... What happens is we have a capacitor here, a capacitor here, and recall that these are just going to be uh, one farad for the normalized version. And then this becomes a resistor, and it's one over the square root of two ohms. And then you can apply that uh, omega p factor if you wish. And then another resistor down here, uh, which is just the square root of two ohms. And then uh, everything's happy and and good here. We just go ahead and connect up everything and we're all set. Oops. <laughs> where, where am I going? All right, square root of 2 omega. I'm trying to make this as complicated as possible and as poorly drawn as possible. Okay, there we go. That's That goes to ground. Okay. So there you have it. Pretty easy. High pass filter version. All right, well, that should about do it for today. Um, I know you guys have some questions probably about, hey, what's going to be on the, 
the very last quiz here, uh, you know, what should we be worried about? Well, um, for quiz seven, the final quiz, um, what we're going to have is just, uh, just filters, all filters all the time. So I expect you guys to be able to, everything that's in purple, that dark purple on the syllabus, you're responsible for, for this quiz and expect something like that on the, on the quiz. Um, my emphasis, however, will probably be on, um, They'll probably be likely, no promises. One um, passive and one active filter. And then inside of each of these, you may have, okay, you may have a low pass or a high pass filter, okay, for the question. And they'll have related questions to it as well. Um, there may be a little bit to do with um, some of the frequency response stuff. Still, that's kind of left over. Um, just recognizing different things and different features. But, oh, and uh, expect to use, obviously, magnitude and frequency scaling. Um, in particular, looking at the homework, the kind of questions you should expect to see um, this one might be a little advanced. I, I would probably reword this because these little cues in here kind of make it a little bit confusing. Um, by the way, this should be kind of kind of clear here. If this is a second order filter, you should know what the coefficient is going to end up being right here, right? So this is kind of a weird way to, to, to design this question. It's a little bizarre, um, but that's okay. Uh, you know, we can work with it. And I think the reason is, is it's wanting to explore some different values for the capacitors and the resistors uh, in here. And we also have to account for, uh, in this problem, uh, these other two resistors that are hanging out in this, uh, in this problem. So that's, that has to do more with the uh, K scaling factor here, right? Recall that if we have a K in there, um, that's directly related to those two resistors that are in play. If the K value is one, and then these resistors pretty much just go away. Ah, quit clicking on that. Okay. So let's look at the problems that I kind of mm, would more expect. So something like, oops, something more like this um, would be fair game for sure. Okay. And then something like this, also pretty fair game, uh, where you're looking at, hey, what's the transfer function here? And um, if I give you some stuff... Uh, can you scale it for me? You know, some real basic things. Okay, well, we got a little bit of time left over, so let's actually go over some of those homework problems that I mentioned uh, from the most recent problem set, the uh, problem set th uh, 36. So in part A of this question, you're asked to compute the transfer function um, and then realize the first order normalized Butterworth transfer function here. Hmm. Um. So what does this mean exactly? Well, basically what's going on here is what we get from this transfer function should be something that is similar to this form or something that allows us to solve for R1, R2, and C, which can take us into this form, okay? And then finally, uh, there's a lot of gibberish here in part C, um, but basically all it's asking you to do in part C is figure out what are my new values now if my, uh, if my omega P moves around, okay? And so that's not too bad. Um, we're just doing that scaling that we talked about, right? And we're also doing a little bit of magnitude scaling so that we can get a properly sized capacitor as well. And so when we push all those equations together and all those conditions, we'll find that we have enough uh, conditions to come up with a nice little unique solution to our problem here, okay? So this is just using inputs to, to specify exactly what's going on with uh, the scaling portion of this. All right, so let's do this first part here. The uh, computation of the transfer function. So for the transfer function, what we want to calculate is HS is equal to this unitless quantity, 
quantity, quantity, <laughs> can't talk today. Okay, so V out over Vn. Well, what we need to do is actually do a little bit of algebra here first. So first thing we're going to do is look at uh, a KC, or yeah, KCL loop here, or node equation. Okay, and what we end up with here is if we look at a specific spot, I'm going to take this spot here, uh, we end up with uh, our voltage drop, and this is, we're going to call this voltage um, right here, this is equal to V minus, right? So we have that, uh, the voltage drop here, Vn minus V minus over R1 is equal to, right, the current coming in must be equal to the current going out. Well, the current's going out through that resistor here and this capacitor here. So we'll grab those two. So this is just equal to the drop of V minus over to V out over R2 plus the same voltage drop, right? We're splitting that current over and looking at it from the, um, from the frequency perspective, we can write this impedance as one over SC makes our equation in our life much easier to deal with because we're dealing with these things as functions of S. Um, so again, much easier to solve for things in that, in that frequency space. Thank you, Laplace transform. Okay. So now if, uh, if V minus is equal to zero, is this true? Why would this be true? Well, uh, it should be pretty clear actually from the grounding here that this is the case. Um, so there you go. <laughs> so if that's the case, which it is, uh, then what do we have? Well, then we're just left with um, a bunch of Vns and Vouts. Well, so we have Vn over R1 is equal to minus, we'll just write it this way, Vout of 1 over R2 plus the S and the C go up top, like so. Okay, not too bad. We just exchange things around a little bit. So Vn over V out is equal to minus R1 over R2 minus uh, R1 SC. And then we're going to take the reciprocal of all that. So this effectively becomes V out or Vn is equal to R2 over R1, just taking that multiplication factor uh, outside for everything, and then having on the inside now this 1 over 1 plus S R2 C. Noting that we just kind of uh, did a little, little dance over here algebraically to get that. Okay, close parenthesis. Okay, so... What does this mean in terms of our transfer function? Well, so this is our transfer function, right? And at the end of the day, we basically have the following. We have, if I were to write it as, as this, k over 1 plus s r2 c. Okay, you may recognize that where k here, I'm just letting equal to minus r2 over r1. Okay, so now to get to part b, what do we need to do? Well, we need to let k um, is equal to minus 1, and the inversion here is not really a big deal, okay? So don't worry too much about that, that negative uh, sign in there. Um, and then what else do we have to worry about? Well, we also know that this portion right here needs to be equal to 1 as well, right? So in order for that to be equal to 1, we set R2 is equal to 1, C is equal to 1. But then what is R1 going to be equal to? Well, if K is equal to minus 1, then R1 needs to follow suit with R2 and also be equal to 1. Okay? So these are our uh, normalized values. Okay? Now we just need to do some scaling. So in order to do the scaling, it's actually quite simple. If f of p is equal to this 
3.5 kilohertz, then that just means that omega p is equal to 2 pi times this. So this is 3.5 um, kiloradians per second times 2 pi, okay? So nothing, nothing too bad there. Um, what do we have? Well, this is just a scaling factor, kf factor, of uh, 7,000 pi. Right, because this is our original omega naught frequency here is equal to one omega c, I should say, and so omega p here is equal to uh, seven thousand pi, and so that's going to be our factor. All right, so then our new our new capacitor needs to become one nanofarad. So c prime is equal to one nanofarad. And we know that we've done this stuff to it, and we've done some, some magnitude scaling to it too, potentially. So the new one is equal to the old one over, using our equations now, Km times Kf, and I apologize for the, uh, for the casing in these solutions here. Um, and we know what Kf is equal to, right? We know that Kf is the 7,000 pi. And so Km then just becomes um, the complement to that. So from this we can derive Km is equal to something like, I'm going to trust the solution manual here, but someone please correct me on Piazza if it's wrong, um, is equal to that, all right? And then all you have to do from there is just scale then apply Km to resistors. So R1 equals R2 is equal to 45.5 kilo ohms. Okay, and then you're done. So this is part C, part B. This is all part A here. That's it.